On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at, am I the last one? Does it feel that way sometimes in Canada here? Like, am I the last Catholic who's, who loves Jesus and believes, believes in, 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 in the Lord and the church and, and, and is excited about, about the faith? Like, am I the last one? Sometimes it feels like I'm one in 450. Some of our high school kids might feel like that. Our next talk, and it's going to be from Father Mark Goring, <laughs> and he's part of that wonderful new Canadian religious order called Companions of the Cross. <laughs> and Father Mark is also involved with the Food for Life TV program here in Canada. Praise the Lord for Food for Life. <laughs> So, let's welcome Father Mark Goring. Amen. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph. Um, by the way, I really encourage, maybe there are some of you who, who you're not even sure if you believe in God. You're, you're not even sure why you're here. Maybe someone invited you here and you came reluctantly. And you have the idea that Catholicism is just some boring religion with a bunch of rules. And let me tell you, Catholicism is not boring. If you take a few moments to look deeply, you'll discover Catholicism is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff that mind-blowing. Some people think the Lord is hiding. And, and I guess at one level, to a certain degree, the Lord, you know, he, 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 he hides a bit, but he doesn't hide that much. Those who seek him, they find him. Amen. And so again, I encourage, if there are any kind of, you know, doubting types, you know, which is fine, I urge you, seek him Amen. while he may be found. Did you know that within you, within your heart, the depths of your being, there are sources of life. And there's an enemy who wants to steal your heart. He wants to rob you. He has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And he does not want your heart to be filled with the life of God. He does not want your heart to be lit up with the fire of God. In, in Leviticus, we have the um, instructions on how to build the temple. And the, the temple and all that, it's a pattern. It's a pattern that reveals something even about ourselves. And one of the instructions in chapter 6 is, the fire is to be kept burning continuously on the altar. It must never go out. And this is a truth about every child of God. We're meant to have a light within our hearts that keeps burning and never goes out. Jesus said, I have come to set a fire on the earth and how I wish it were already blazing. That fire is meant to burn in our hearts. <clears throat> Let me mention a quick word about Our Lady of Fatima. And again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that the Blessed Mother is one, one of these, these people that the Lord, you know, are from heaven that the Lord has sent. Now, when we speak about apparitions that are approved by the church, we're not saying that these are at the same level of, of you know, the, the doctrine of the faith. The, the, the author, um, Father René Laurentin says, the official recognition of an apparition does not make it a dogma necessary for salvation. No one is obliged to believe in a recognized apparition, even Lourdes and Fatima. Its function is to awaken the faith, charity, and especially hope. St. Thomas Aquinas stresses these points and that the function of apparitions is essentially prophetic. Because this is exactly the crisis that was happening in 1917 when the Blessed Mother appeared to the three children of Fatima. I can't tell the whole story of Fatima because I don't have the time, 
but it's an example. Seriously, if you're a bit of an agnostic type, if you're not sure if this Catholicism and stuff is real, read about Fatima. Seriously, it'll blow your mind. It'll blow away all your categories, you made me the walls you've built. Powerful story. But anyway, she appeared in 1917, and we don't understand the gravity of that time. This is a time where there was happening a, a massive extinguishing of the light of faith in people's hearts. And what was happening in, at, at that time? There were new political systems emerging. Systems, you know, where power to the people, we can't have a couple rich people owning everything and oppressing everyone. There was also a time, um, where, you know, the new technologies were emerging, um, scientific uh, uh, discoveries, medical discoveries, all good stuff. This is good stuff, a new time. There were breakthroughs um, in, in even historical analysis, and, and it, it, it was a time of new hope for humanity. Again, new, new philosophies, new ways of thinking. People really saw this as a new age. And what some of the intelligentsia, the super smart people who thought they were super smart, which makes them not that smart, you know? <laughs> what a lot of them were teaching, and some of it was with bad intentions. There was an, an end game they had in mind, but they were teaching that people who believe in Jesus are a bunch of superstitious, uneducated peasants. You're silly for believing in your religion and your Catholicism and Jesus. Get with the times. And, and we, you know, we have, for example, Marx, who taught that religion is the opium of the people. You got to get rid of that. The, the, the understanding, what was being proclaimed by so many, is that religion is what's preventing progress. We're in a time where we, the people, can create a, a utopia, a perfect society, a paradise, with new, you know, um, ways of governance, new medicines, new science. We can create our own paradise. And what they were taught is, we're going to create our new governments, our new with, you know, with, with our new ways of thinking, and everything's going to be perfect for everyone. And if you get in our way, if you try to prevent our agenda, which we think is perfect, if you get in the way, you are an enemy of the people because you're preventing progress. If you try to get in the way of our agenda to make the world a paradise, you're evil. And... Since we don't believe in God anymore, we think it's the opium of the people, we don't believe anyone is sacred, is holy. We don't believe what Paul said, that you are a temple of holiness. We don't believe that. That's old-fashioned thinking for peasants. So if anyone gets in the way of us creating a perfect world, we can kill those people. That was the mentality. To the tune of, Google it, how many deaths due to communism, or something like that. The number is about 90 million people. Seriously. Every human being, once they enter into adulthood, has to spend a little bit of time understanding how low humanity can go. That's just a reality. 90 million people. Don't think in terms of numbers. Think in terms of dads being killed. Think in terms of children starved to death. Think in terms of, of, of husbands losing their wives and so on. It's, it's a horrific number, but this is what happens when you try to take the heart out of the people and you succeed. Nations that have turned over to atheistic regimes and all of that have experienced untold devastation and this was, this, was, this was what was happening 1917. This was just about to spread across the world like wildfire. I mean, who can argue with power to the people? Who doesn't want that? You know, the devil is cunning. He's subtle. He's sneaky. Power to the people, but renounce Jesus. That's what they were offering. Are you familiar with that story from 1 Kings chapter 18? 
There's a parallel. It's there. You can see it. I want to sh- share with you seven, seven parallels. This is a biblical, an event of biblical proportion. Number one, Elijah was the last of the prophets. He says, Elijah said, am I the only remaining prophet of the Lord? And there are 450 prophets of Baal. Does it feel that way sometimes in Canada here? Like, am I the last Catholic who's, who loves Jesus and believes, believes in, 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 in the Lord and the church and, and, and is excited about, about the faith? Like, am I the last one? Sometimes it feels like I'm one in 450. Some of our high school kids might feel like that, in their Catholic schools even. Am I the only one who's excited about the Lord Jesus? Uh, Elijah, am, I am the only remaining prophet of the Lord. When so many people, especially the young super smarty pants people, the college students, the university students, bye-bye Catholic faith, I don't need that anymore. Oh, which conveniently, I can do whatever I want now. There's no morality. All those rules from God that want, you know, God wants to make my life miserable, bye-bye. And who's left? One in 450. So that's the first parallel. The second parallel is... Elijah says, how long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. Make up your mind. Doesn't it feel like that today sometimes? Catholics, make up your mind. If Jesus Christ is Lord, love him. Follow him. Make up your mind. Seriously, if the Lord is God, follow him. If Jesus is Lord, worship him. How long will you straddle the issue? Catholics in Canada, make up your mind. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. The third parallel. (laughs) Elijah said, we're going to meet on Mount Carmel. Place, time, uh, and date. We're going to meet specific place, specific time. The three children of Fatima said there's going to be a miracle for all to see. Which anyone can say, oh, there's going to be a miracle one day. Anyone can say that. The children said, at the Kova de Ira, specific place. Not only that, on October 13th. Not only that, at noon. <laughs> oh, oh, woo! You see, the, 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 the governing people, the anti, anti-church, uh, new, newly kind of uh, government of the time, they were anti-church. They were mad at the kids. You know, they even kidnapped the kids in July and threatened to kill them. And he said, the, the governor said, you admit that you're lying or tell me the secrets. And the kids say, no way, I'd rather die. <laughs> and then the governor said, we're go- I'm going to kill you then. Go right ahead because I'll go to heaven. <laughs> the governor lost. He eventually released the kids, but the newspapers found out Three children are saying Mary's appearing, crowds are coming, they were kidnapped, threatened to be killed, they wouldn't budge. People are like, oh, we have a fight coming up. (laughs) And the kids are saying October 13th. So they say that the anti-church media, you notice how the media always seems to be anti-church, what's up with that? Anyways, (laughs) the anti-church media, they were like, oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We can finally expose these gullible uh, Catholics who believe in fairy tales. We can finally expose them for what they are. A bunch of superstitious, uneducated peasants. Great. The whole media was there. 
If you don't believe me, look at the pictures, look at the media reports. They were there, ready to show how silly the Catholics were. And they say about 70,000 people showed up, just like, just like with, with Elijah. Big crowd showed up. The fourth parallel is it was pouring rain. It was pouring rain on the day of the, of the miracle, before the miracle happened. And so too with Elijah. You see, the, the, the prophets of Baal, they had their go till noon. They started doing their dancing and all whatever. They started cutting themselves. You see people cutting themselves. You wonder where that comes from. They start cutting themselves, dancing around. Nothing happens. Elijah starts to, you know, mock them a bit. And then at noon, Elijah says, fill four jars with water and pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said. And they did it again. Do it a third time, he said. And they did it a third time. What's that a foretelling of? It's baptism. Triple immersion. And I think also in Fatima, the, the rain indicates the need for tears of repentance. If we want to enter into the kingdom of God, we need to repent from our heart for our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. The fifth parallel already mentioned, it was noon. The children gave a specific time, noon. What, when did Elijah step in and say, okay guys, let me show you how it's done. He did that at noon. This is, a, a, again, a miracle of biblical proportion. Some people, I don't believe, some people say, I don't believe those Old Testament stories are all made up. Well, read about Fatima. Maybe they're not made up. Maybe they actually happened just as the scripture says. The sixth parallel with Elijah when he called on the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, fire came down from heaven. When Lucia told everyone, be quiet, close your umbrellas, look, what happened? People saw the sun, started dancing around a bit, and then it seemed to be plummeting towards the earth. Everyone thought, oh, it's the end of the world. People who didn't believe in God, who were just there for the show, they were doing acts of contrition and professions of faith. <laughs> Everyone was freaking out. They, they saw the sun coming down, the fire from heaven coming down, and just before it seemed like it was all over, the sun stopped, returned to its orbit, and it was all over. Now, it has to be said... This didn't happen for like 15 seconds. Oh, oh, did you notice that? Oh, no, I missed it. How long did the sun dancing and swirling and the colors go on for? 10 minutes, hello. Hard to miss that, 10 minutes. Again, the newspaper articles, you can read them. Secular newspapers who previously were, were publishing articles ridiculing the children... Now they're publishing an article describing the miracle of the sun. Amazing. Amazing. And then the seventh and last parallel is when the people saw the fire come down with Elijah, they finally said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. And the people of Portugal, again, at this time where, oh, is Catholicism really real? We have all these educated people questioning everything and telling us we're silly and we should trust in medicine and science and, you know, power to the people. You know, is, is God real? Or, you know, people sitting on the fence when they saw the sun dancing and they saw all that, they said, the Lord is God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fascinating story. Uh, of, again, just, just the Lord's desire for his people to know him. He wants to be known. Again, as it, as it says in Isaiah, I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a people who did not call upon my name. And what's very interesting, just to drive home this point, that this is, this is Carmel, Mount Carmel all over again, is when Lucia and the children... When the miracle of the sun was happening, they, had, they saw this vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also St. Joseph, but the Blessed Virgin Mary, dressed up as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. That's the Lord saying, you better believe these are the times of, of Elijah. You better believe it's time to make a decision who you're going to follow. You better be real darn sure before you abandon the light in your heart, before you renounce Jesus Christ. Because don't expect these people to give you 
what they're, what they're offering you. It's not going to happen. Choose this day whom you will serve. And if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. There's a fundamental lie that was proclaimed at the time of the children of Fatima. Again, throughout the, especially the Western world. A fundamental lie that goes back to, be, to the beginning. And we hear today. We can have paradise without God. That's what they thought. I remember I was telling some, uh, some children in our catechesis class about the story of Fatima, and I said, you know, people were saying we can have paradise without God. And one kid's like, how can you have paradise without God? Isn't God what makes paradise? And I said, you are not, you are not far from the kingdom of God, <laughs> from the mouth of babes. <clears throat> you think we can have paradise without God? Seriously? It's impossible. God is the light. He is, he is the, 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 the one who fulfills every desire. He's the fulfillment of all desire. And no one else. And anyone who says that they can fulfill all of your desires is a liar, apart from God. Someone who says they can fulfill your all desires apart from God, a liar. The, the other lie. We can be like God without God. That's a lie. Does the Lord want us to grow in his likeness? We're made in his image, and he wants us to grow in his likeness, to become more holy, more free, more pure, more peaceful. Of course he does. But you can't become like God without God. Amen. And that's what the devil offers. You know, in, in, in the, the Garden of, 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 of Eden, you know, uh, you will be like God. Who is the devil to help someone to become like God. What was the devil doing? He was trying to steal what Adam and Eve already had, the divine likeness, the image of God. You know, people today offer freedom. Don't you want to be free? Only one person can set you free. That's Jesus Christ. <clears throat> And then the last lie, again, it's all one big lie wrapped up together. The lie that God is against us. God doesn't want you to have fun. If you're with God, your life will be boring. If you're with God, you won't be happy. If you're with God, things won't work out. It's a lie. A person who walks with God has peace that this world can't give. His joy is full, and he has life in abundance. We walk in the glory. And only God can give that. <clears throat> These lies are continued to be proclaimed even today by so many, especially our so-called great intellectuals today. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring continues with his teaching from the Lift Jesus Higher Rally. You've been deceived and lied to, and now you are not filled with the joy of the Lord. You've lost your innocence. And brothers and sisters, this is an epidemic in our Western world, in Canada and the U.S. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Am I the Last One? We invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1818. Jesus reminds us of a wonderful truth in the sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. He's talking about our earthly possessions. You know, he, he reminds us that they can be stolen, that they can be destroyed, and he, he tells us in Matthew 6.20, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. 
What does it mean to store up treasure in heaven? Well, what that means quite simply is cultivating and nurturing a relationship with the Lord. That's what we need to have in our lives if we want true treasure in heaven. There are many ways that we uh, cultivate and nurture this relationship. We can read the Bible. We can go to Mass regularly. We can take part in parish missions or take part in a pilgrimage, watch good Catholic programming, or listen to good Christian music. And another key way to really connect with God, to really nurture and cultivate our relationship with Him, is through prayer. Prayer is a key way to connect with God. If we are not praying consistently, regularly, Scripture says to pray without ceasing, if we are not doing that, we will lose that sense of connection with God. Oftentimes people have a belief in God and they say, ah, they don't really experience Him. And many times you talk to them and you talk about their prayer life and it's virtually non-existent. We can't get by with just saying grace at meals, although that's a good thing. We can't get by with the occasional panic prayer when we're in trouble. We need to cultivate a healthy prayer life. Now, I have a booklet today I want to talk to you about. Uh, it's called Treasure in Heaven. And this is what we want, treasure in heaven, not treasure on earth. And it speaks of uh, the prayers that we should pray every day as a Catholic. Our own Father Mark Goring has written it, and he gives us seven prayers that a Catholic should pray every day. And what I like about this prayer guide, it takes such a short time, it's 10 minutes. For myself, I use it uh, virtually every day to start my day, and then I have a series of other prayers that I pray throughout the day, but it's a great way to start my day. But what it can really do for an individual is if you're struggling with being consistent with prayer, you know, you pray sometimes and then you don't, uh, this can really help you become consistent. You just pray these prayers every day and there's scripture verses in here and it really helps to develop your prayer life and helps you stay committed to your prayer life. And then as it develops, you'll just pray more and more and it, it'll develop wonderfully well. And you'll sense that your relationship with God is developing too. You'll sense His peace. You'll sense His consolation. You'll sense His presence with you. And you'll store up for yourselves that treasure in heaven. If you would like a copy of Father Mark's prayer guide, I would invite you to write in. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1818 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on, Am I the Last One? Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post data checks or through our website, to help us continue the Food for Life ministry. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring continues with his teaching from the Lift Jesus Higher Rally. You've been deceived and lied to, and now you are not filled with the joy of the Lord. You've lost your innocence. And brothers and sisters, this is an epidemic in our Western world, in Canada and the U.S. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.